Hello, I'm Michael Burke. Welcome to BCAT Sector B, the business of Brooklyn. A large and growing portion of Brooklyn's population is foreign born. The same is true of its business owners. Every day, immigrants open up the doors to new companies. And this month, we're looking at what it takes to get them opened and what kinds of obstacles people may face when they're from another country. Did you get my email, right? With all uh, info for Billboard? My name is uh, Mikhail Offenjian. We came with my wife and my old son uh, from Russia to the United States in uh, 1989. My goal was to uh, leave the uh, communist system, to leave the uh, Soviet Union, to be in the United States, to feel uh, freedom. My name is Benny. We are the restaurant, I, the one I opened around like four or five months ago. Since I was young, I wanted to do something on my own. And it was like this, either take this and try to do something with your life or just not do anything. Two entrepreneurs, both proud business owners with different businesses, experiences and struggles. But one thing they do have in common is that they are both Russian immigrants. I think people who come here, they have more ambitions. They, they, like they, they're trying more because they know they have no one to rely on. All, all, the, all they have realized is just themselves. The problem, it seems to me, is the same. For immigrants, maybe a little bit different because not sometimes uh, lack of uh, perfect English. Lack of perfect English didn't stop Mikhail Offenjim, or Michael, as his business card reads, from becoming an entrepreneur. In fact, the Verizon store is his second business since he came to the U.S. almost 20 years ago. When the computer servicing company he started in 1998 was no longer profitable because of an ever-changing market, he decided to purchase a franchise instead. Today, cellular phone began to be as a small computers, and more and more people use a cellular phone to send an email, to open the files, to be connected to business. An engineer by training, Michael understands the technology side of his business very well. His bigger challenge is marketing, how to draw more customers to his Diker Heights retail store. It's got a 2 megapixel camera, flash, Bluetooth. Today we're going forward, we want to orient a billboard, we want to run advertisement on a radio. Michael is also moving toward expanding his market by offering surveillance and computer services to other small business owners. After immigrating to the U.S. in 2002, Benny Azizov held different positions in the restaurant industry. Then he decided to take his fate into his own hands. My first job was a busboy in a restaurant. And then I, I went to another, war, uh, another store, which was the pizzeria, the one I have now. And I was working there as a manager. And I saw that the old owner, they, they, was, they weren't really like, interested in that place. And I told them, I'm like, listen, you're not interested, so let me take it over. And he said, yeah, Benny, I trust you, and he sold that pizzeria to me. After acquiring the pizza shop, Benny worked on opening another restaurant in the same Midwood neighborhood. The first two months, they the most important. People loved our food, our service, our place, the way it's decorated. They really, really like it, and I see that a lot of them are coming back. And even now, in summer, when, when most places are very slow, thank God we're doing pretty good business. Even though things seem to be going well for both businesses, they have needed help from outside sources. Michael and Benny sought the services of a long-standing organization in the Russian immigrant community. The Hebrew Free Loan Society uh, was founded in 1892. It's based on a principle in the Talmud that the highest form of charity is giving somebody a loan that would help them either to get through the rough spot in their life or start a business that would support them thereafter. Today, in the micro-enterprise program, we lend up to $25,000 interest-free to emigres from the former Soviet Union to start small businesses. Help from the Hebrew Free Loan Society is crucial for its clients, especially since many of them aren't eligible for commercial bank loans. Apply for a business loan from bank, but was denied because the company is not long enough in business. Please call me when I get a message. You know, it's very difficult because they uh, don't know the business. They are not yet trusted enough from the bank. Difficulty accessing financing is common for many businesses but immigrant entrepreneurs face a number of additional obstacles. Usually the immigrant business community has doubled the issues from everybody else. They have to figure out how to position their businesses and at the same time most of them have language barriers. 
for a lot of people it's starting from scratch at age 30, 40, and even 50. So they have to figure out how to adapt to the local mentality. They have to learn how to do business in this country. A lot of people are very much at the mercy of their accountants because they don't know the very basic tax laws. Despite the hurdles, there are success stories. A little foresight and a lot of determination can make the difference. I would probably recommend doing as much research as possible. They have to understand what is it that they want to do. They have to understand who the target market is going to be and how they're actually going to go about providing that service. Uh, but then they should really tap into a network of organizations that help small businesses. With that kind of support, entrepreneurs like Michael and Benny are much more likely to realize their dreams. When you just start a business, you, you're very, very scared. You don't know how it's going to go because a lot of things are on your shoulders. And when you, met, when, you, when you meet people like this, it really, like, really helps you to, to go what, you, what you're going for. To be an owner of a business, to be own business, gives me more opportunities, gives me more freedom of uh, making decisions. I hope in uh, maybe a year we will try to open another store, find the right place, and uh, yes, we'll do it.